today we're going to talk about integrated rate laws. And the first thing that we're going to start off is with a first order reaction. What we've done up to this point is that we've defined rate so far as the change of concentration of a reactant with respect to time, which is the negative if the reactant is disappearing, and it becomes a positive if we're talking delta, let's say B, and B is our product over delta T, is equal to K times A, because we've defined A as having an exponent of one at the top here, which means that our reaction is first order. This is called the differential rate equation. And if you recall from calculus, when we talk about the rate of change, we perform a differential equation, a differential operator, and we get dy by dx. And this is exactly what delta means in this case. If we perform a calculus operation, the delta actually means the d. So it's the rate of change of A with respect to time. If we integrate this value so that it's relevant over a wider spectrum of different time values, we end up getting the integrated rate equation, which we'll, we're not going to go through the actual calculus through it, just as long as you understand that this is how we get this equation. We end up getting ln of a at any time t minus the ln of a naught, the zero stands for naught, which means initial concentration of a, is equal to negative kt. If we rearrange this so that we get ln of a at time t equals the negative of kt plus the ln of a naught, if you have a look, this actually resembles y equals mx plus b, which is our equation of a straight line. And if you were to graph this equation of the straight line, the m, which is your slope, is the negative of your k, negative of your rate constant, t is uh, your x value, so you'd be graphing the ln of a at t as your y versus t, which is your x, and your y-intercept is the ln of a naught, is, would be the ln of the initial concentration of a at time equals zero. So if we are to plot, for instance, the concentration of a, let's pretend that the concentration of a is CH3NC, and in this case, you see that you end up getting a curve. Once we take the ln of this first order reaction, we get a straight line. And it's a lot easier to do the math and figure out everything that we need to figure out in order to solve problems if we're dealing with a straight line versus a curve. So if we rearrange, uh, we get the equation to look like this. Sometimes we end up rearranging based on easier math operators to get the right answer. So if you recall the laws of ln um, and the laws of logarithms, anytime you have a quotient, for instance, x over y, what really this means is that it's the ln of x minus the ln of y. And if it is a product, it's the ln of x plus the ln of y. If you plot the ln of a at time t versus t, you get a straight line with a slope of your negative k, and your intercept is the ln of the initial a concentration. Okay, so let's have a look at a problem. So in this case, uh, we're talking... Okay, so let's have a look at a problem. So this word problem allows us to use the first order integrated rate equation. So the question is, the first order rate constant with the decomposition of a certain insecticide in water at 12 degrees Celsius is 1.45 per year. Year to the negative one means per year. A quantity of this insecticide is washed into a lake on June 1st, leading to a concentration of 5.0 times 10 to the negative seven grams per centimeter cubed. Actually, this should be of insecticide, not of water. Assume that the average temperature of the lake is 12 degrees Celsius. And this question we actually took from page 588 in the Brown AP Chemistry textbook. So the question is asking us, what is the concentration of the insecticide on June 1st of the following year? So we write out in the question what's given to us. So we know that A0, so the initial concentration of the insecticide, 
It's 5 times 10 to the negative 7 grams per centimeter cubed. Temperature was 12 degrees Celsius. Time was one year. And our rate constant, K, 1.45 per year. And what we're asked to find out is the concentration of A at time equals one year. So we use the integrated first order expression and we sub in everything that's given to us in the question. And when we work that through, we end up getting the ln of A at time t is equal to negative 15.9586577 grams per centimeter cubed. Now, what's important to remember is that this is the ln expression. This isn't A at time t, so you don't stop here. What you have to do, you have to do the inverse ln to actually give you A at time t. So when we do the inverse, because ln is a natural logarithm, we take e to the power of negative 15.958, which we end up getting approximately 1.17 times 10 to the negative 7 grams per centimeter cubed. Round off using appropriate sig figs. And we get 1.2 times 10 to the negative 7 grams per centimeter cubed. Part B, how long will it take for the concentration of the insecticide to drop to 3 times 10 to the negative 7 grams per centimeter cubed? So in this case, um, I used this form of the integrated first rate law equation because I could easily then solve for T, because that's what I'm asked to figure out. So I rearranged to sub in so that I can easily sub in all my numbers for time t, which I end up getting, I sub in 3 times 10 to the negative 7 as my a at time t. My initial concentration is in the denominator um, times 1 over negative k, which gives us approximately 0.35 years.